Welcome. So let's say you want to get the extra life donation tracker. You want to get the latest version. Um, basically, you just come to this page, djotaku.github.io slash el donation tracker. And you just click right here on Windows download. And then it'll download it for you. And um, if you want to see um, the release notes, in case there's anything in there like, hey, don't use this or use that or whatever, you just click here. You'll see that this latest release was a bug fix. And so it would definitely be important to use it um, because otherwise things might not work they were expected. And there's some other information here. Um, and then a link to the instructions. Um, further down this page is um, video you're watching. Well, right now this is the old video because I have to put this one together that I'm recording now. Um, and then at the bottom, documentation, in case you want to go see how to use the program. Um, if you don't want to use a video, if you want to see it written down, or if you want to contribute as a developer. And it looks like this. There's installation and usage and so on and so forth. So um, in Chrome, you can show in folder like this to see the program that you just downloaded. Um, there may be a different way to do it in whatever your browser you're using. And um, so this one here is in downloads. And if you right click, you want to extract all. And now I'll click here, show extracted files when complete, extract. And that'll do its thing. It'll take a little bit. It's about a hundred meg file. Right, and there's um, all the files that uh, are needed to run the program. And all you need to do is double click on GUI here. If you see this, um, click on more info and run anyway. And then you will get this command line window and you'll get um, this uh, GUI window here, and we'll come back to what you do with this momentarily. All right, this portion of the instructions are going to be the same whether you're running Windows or Linux. Um, so the fact that this is uh, Windows here um, shouldn't concern you. Um, the only thing that should be different on Linux is that um, you'll have a Linux um, command line, and this will be different depending on the uh, window decorations that you're using in um, KDE or GNOME or i3 or whatever the heck program you're using um, if you're running this in Linux. So the first thing that you should do is go to the settings. All right, so the first thing you need to edit is the participant ID. Where do you get that from? Well, here's my Extra Life page. And you see all the way at the end of the URL, it says participant ID equals, and then a number. So you just wanna copy that number, put it right in here. The next thing you need to change is the text folder. So the way this program works is it's gonna create a whole bunch of text files representing things like how many people have donated, uh, what the latest donation was, um, who the top donor is, all those type of things. So it's gonna go in that folder, where whatever folder that happens to be. I use Dropbox so that I can run um, this program on Linux or Windows, and either way, it's going to update the same files. Uh, but you can put it in any folder anywhere on your system, and we're going to use that later when we set up OBS and XSplit. Next is the currency symbol. It's probably going to stay a dollar sign, but you can make it whatever you want. Then there's the team ID. Where do you get that? Well, just like the participant ID is at the end of your URL, I'm in the giant bomb team. If I click on the team, it says team ID equals whatever. And so right here, it's 50394. And so 50394 is what I have here. Um, the last two things are your tracker image and your donation sound. So um, you can click here and you can pick any um, image that has a transparent background. That is to say, if you opened it in GIMP or Adobe Photoshop, the background should be checkerboard. Okay. 
This image of me here is an example of a transparent background image. So um, if I were to take this image, I would appear solid and anything I put this on top of um, would just appear right behind me. For example, I use this when I'm making um, YouTube video um, uh, thumbnails. And so uh, if I turn this on right here, you can see there's the background right behind me, see? So you want an image that's like that. Um, so right now um, I include an image in the folder that had the GUI.exe. It's the engineer from um, uh, Team Fortress 2. And I, I think, uh, especially because that belongs to uh, Valve in the future, I'm gonna change that to be the um, Extra Life logo. But anyway, that's included there, but pick any image you want that has a transparent background. And then for the donation sound, I've included a sound of my daughter saying you have a donation. That's also in the same folder. And I'll show you what that does in a second. And then finally, there's how many donors you want to display. So um, as we'll see when we set up OBS and XSplit, um, when it captures your number of donations and uh, the most recent donors and stuff like that, you can pick however many you want to display. So you can have a scrolling display, you could have a giant list on your screen, however you want to do it. Um, so you change that. So now you can hit save and it'll save to the um, participant.conf text file that was um, in the folder that you downloaded um, and, and unzipped. That's not the best thing to do. And um, as far as I've been able to test, it does not work on Linux with the way that I'm packaging things now on Linux um, because of the fact that the Pi installer is not working as well on Linux as it used to. So what you want to do is hit persistent settings. So you hit persistent settings. It'll tell you where it saved it to if you look here. And I'm using a uh, Python module um, that is called uh, XDG environment, uh, or actually XDG env, but it stands for environment. And that is basically a set of standards of where things should go on your system. So all config files on Windows should go under users, your username, and then da 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 slash config slash whatever. Um, if you look at games like um, Stardew Valley that are cross-platform Linux and Windows, they'll tend to do stuff like that. Um, and on Linux, it'll be under your um, your home directory dot config um, slash extra life duration tracker. All right, so you've persisted your settings. Uh, one quick thing I want to mention is keep an eye on this as you're using the program because any errors or anything that comes up there uh, will kind of help guide you on, into what's going on. So if things aren't updating, look there and it might say, hey, I couldn't connect to the URL or something like that. Um, so I've got data here because, um, like I said, I've got it pointed at my Dropbox and every, um, I think it's 30 seconds, I have this page update itself based on what's on the text files. So... Um, before we actually run the program, I want to show you what the uh, image and sound were for. So we're going to click um, here on Tracker. And again, this is something you're going to want to put into either OBS or XSplit, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But we're going to test it. You got a donation. And that's what will come up. Okay, and it's green screen on purpose uh, for a reason. So you can kind of have that overlay. So every time someone donates um, and it's pulled from the API, that'll come up and you'll see it um, on your screen, which is really cool. So finally, the last thing you wanna do, actually before we run, one more thing, I'm sorry, one more thing. So I added the help and file menu um, recently and uh, file quit will just quit. Um, when you're running the program, you have to hit stop to finish it. Um, going file quit will automatically be the equivalent of hitting stop. Um, if you go help documentation, that'll bring up this documentation page that I told you to, so you don't need to memorize where that is. You can just go there, and that documentation page also takes you back to this page. So if you want to download the latest version or see the latest um, release notes, that's great. Um, if you go help uh, check for update, it'll tell you if you have an update. I have the latest version, obviously. I just grabbed the latest version off of there. Um, so that's cool. And then finally, about, this is your typical about page, and all of these links go to different places. So let's finally go ahead and hit run. So we hit run, and you'll see over here, uh, you've hit the run button, uh, loading the config file. That's in case you made any changes since you loaded the program up. And then you'll see um, this URL 
Um, that's not important. That'll be going away in a future version. Uh, but you'll see here, it was a 4, 51, and 33 seconds military time uh, when I first ran the program. And in 30, another 30 seconds, you'll see another timestamp. And that's how you know the program is running and it's actually grabbing you data every 30 seconds. You'll see a timestamp. If you stop seeing a timestamp or you get something here that looks like an error, hopefully you shouldn't because I've tried to put... Um, well, you may see errors, but hopefully it won't exit out of the program. I've tried to put... Um, uh, try to catch all those exceptions and kind of give you something to show to let you know what's going on like hey I couldn't reach the URL or hey check your donation ID maybe that's wrong right so you can see it just went again and so every time it does that if someone has donated in between that time it'll appear on here and it'll do things on your XSplit or OBS screen which I will now show you all right and this is how you would configure EL donation tracker for XSplit. Now I haven't used XSplit in about five years. So um, there's going to be a couple things that I'm not sure how to alter. Um, but I'll assume that if you're using XSplit, you know how to use XSplit. You just want to know how you should use um, EL donation tracker with XSplit. So let's start off with the um, donation tracker. So that is uh, just to demonstrate again. Here's your tracker. Here's your GUI. So if you hit test alert, you got a donation. that comes up, that goes back. So that's how that works. So um, how do we use that within XSplit? Well, what you want to do is go to add source, then go to screen capture, window capture, look for uh, tracker GUI.exe. Depending on how many windows open you have open, this may be a long or short list. So we bring that. Uh, oops, that was the wrong one. I meant to say, let me remove that. I meant to say look for tracker uh, GUI.exe. There we go. So there's the tracker window. All right. All right, so it's there, but uh, we don't necessarily want it to look like this, right? So let's right click on here. That'll bring up your editor for the tracker. Um, so the first thing you want to do is um, go to color and click chroma key. So now you'll see that the green disappears. So let's trigger that again so you can kind of see what that's going to look like. You got a donation. Of course, we have a black background, so it's not going to help that you can't see the words. So let's see if we can change that. All right, so I've added an image slideshow behind it. So now let's trigger that. You got a donation. There you go. Again, not the perfect situation there. And um, still got to figure out exactly how to change the font you color got a on Windows on Linux. It's nice and white. But, you know, you get the idea, right? So it'll appear there. Um, but still, we don't want necessarily the... Um, you know the top bars and all that stuff so you can come over here go to layout and on cropping just go ahead and crop Oop, might have gone a little too far there okay so just kind of crop it in here and crop it in there and crop it in there and crop it in there until you've got something that doesn't show anymore and then you got a donation. There you go. So that's how you add that. And again, um, uh, not exactly the best thing to have behind it, but you can kind of see what's going on. So uh, the big thing that we generate here are a bunch of text files. So we're going to add a source. Uh, we're going to go text. Then you're going to do custom script, edit script. And then here you're going to say load text from a local file then click on this dot 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 and we're going to go to where we set them remember i said i do mine in dropbox so we come in here and do um let's do the last n uh, donation names horizontal and let's see what else let's go to settings all right update text all right and then just do a scroll 
and you'll kind of see it scrolling. Let's uh, speed it up a bit. Whoa! Now, you obviously don't want to do it that fast, but that kind of shows you what you can do here. So you can have, you know, the last 10 uh, donations and you can have that scrolling and every time someone donates, that'll update. Uh, I'm going to stop that scroll. Um, you can also um, have, eh, I guess I'll add it as a different one. So let's add another text. So, oh, where'd that go? Oh, I guess I hit cancel, so it went away. Uh, let's add a, <laughs> another text source and we'll go custom script and script. Put from file. This time we'll do the uh, goal. So this is how much we hope to hope to raise. 500. There's 500. <clears throat> now remember, I said I'm not a uh, I'm not a uh, XSplit guy. I haven't used XSplit in a long time, so I'm not sure how you change font size in XSplit, but I'm sure it's nice and easy to change. But that's one example. We'll hit OK so that stays. We'll add another source just for one final example. Custom script, edit script, load from file, and then uh, say the team captain, right? If you're part of a team. And then hit OK. And so there's the team captain's part of his name, since again, fonts are giant in XSplit for some reason I'm not sure of. Uh, definitely not like that in, uh, in OBS, but, uh, let's see if we come over here, if we can figure it out. Calibri outline. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure, but again, I'm assuming that if you're using XSplit, you know how to use XSplit, you know how to add text because maybe you're making title screens or whatever. I'm just showing you that how you grab and use the text, um, from, um, EL donation tracker and as things update. So, um, let's say instead of. Uh, our goal, this was the amount uh, raised. So, oops, let's go, uh, let's go here, edit script, and let's see, total raised, update. So I've raised 50 bucks so far. Uh, so each time someone donates while Yale Donation Tracker is running, it'll update that text file. And when it updates that text file, it'll update the text on your screen. So this number will grow as people donate. And so um, that's how you can use EL Donation Tracker. So um, happy streaming, good luck. And remember, it's for the kids.